Hey guys, welcome back. So on a previous video, we explained the basics of the sum if and the sum ifs function, and we saw how we can use them to sum with criteria. In this video, we're going to see how we can sum between two dates. And for that, we're going to use the sum ifs function because when summing between two dates, we will have at least two criteria, the from date and the to date or the starting date and the end date. So we will need to use the sum ifs. We can't use the sum if because sum if can only handle one criteria. So we've got our data set here containing our date, product, color, region, and sales. And let's say we want to sum total sales between the two dates, the from date and the to date. So we want to get the total sales between these dates. So we're going to write equal sum ifs. And then our sum range is going to be our sales column. And we're going to absolute that. And then the criteria range one is actually going to be our date column because our first criteria is the from date, right? So our first criteria is the from date. So the criteria range one, the range containing our first criteria is going to be the date column. And then criteria one, we're going to do it just like we did it for the values on the previous video. So it's going to be greater than or equal to between double quotes. So we will treat this as a text greater than or equal to, and we're going to concatenate that onto the from date. Okay. So it's greater than or equal to the from date. And we've explained that on the previous video. And then criteria range two is going to be the date column as well. And we're going to absolute that as well. We're pressing F4 on our keyboard. And then criteria two is going to be less than or equal to, and we're going to concatenate that onto the end date or the to date. And we're going to close brackets and press enter. As you can see here, the total sales is 100,920. And let's give that a currency as well here. 100,920 and let's drag the formula down and we get the rest of our sales. So let's check our numbers here. So first of all, between the 7th of March, 2018, so date filters between 7th of March, 2018. So let's select 7th of March here, 2018. And then the 23rd of September, 2018 and if we click OK here and let's sum our sales and we get a hundred thousand nine hundred and twenty. Let's remove our filters here so we've got our numbers correctly. So this is how you can sum between two dates. Now let's say you want to sum the sales for a particular month. So if we want to sum the sales, for example, for March 2018 only. So we've got to put it as between the 1st of March and the end of March. Okay. However, because the months have different number of days, right? So for example, February has 28 or 29 days only and December has 31 days, right? And November has 30 days only. So we can't write between the 1st of a certain month and uh, the 30th of that particular month because we cannot automate that. We cannot say that all the months are 30 days. So we need actually a function to help us get to the end day of the month or the last day of the month, right? And it will get that automatically, whether the month is 29 days like February or 28 days, or whether it's 30 days or 31 days. So the function to help us with that is called the end of month function. And basically you give it the start date of a month and then the second argument here is which month you need to get the end of so if you need to get the end of the same month as the start of the month you put a zero in here if you put a positive one then you're going to get to the end date of the following month so here it's the first of march so if you put a one we're going to get to the end of April is 30th of April. If you put a negative one, we're going to go one month behind. So it's going to be the 28th or 29th of February, depending on the year. So we'll put a zero here to get to the end of March, basically. And if you press enter, you can see here we get the general formatting. If we convert that to a date, you can see here we got the 31st of March, 2018. And if you need to learn about how dates and times work in Excel, if you're not very familiar with that, you can always check my Excel date and time masterclass. I'll leave you the link below in the description. So this function here, the end of month function helps us get to the end day 
of the month or the last day of the month. So we can do the sum ifs this way as well. So equals sum ifs here. So let's say we're going to get the total sales here for March 2018. So the sum range is going to be the sales column here, right? This is what we want to sum. And we're going to absolute that. And then the criteria range one is going to be our date column, right? And then criteria one is going to be greater than or equal to, and that is concatenated onto the beginning of the month here. And then criteria range two is going to be our date column. And then criteria two is going to be less than or equal to, and that is going to be concatenated onto the end of month. And we're going to put the first of the month and we're going to input a zero here to get the end of month for that particular date here. And we're going to close our brackets here and press enter. And as you can see here, we get the total sales here for that particular month. And if we drag the formula down, we're able to get our sales here. And let's give that a formatting here for currency. And let's check our numbers as well. So if we filter here for March, it's 11,537. So let's filter for March. And if we sum our sales here, 11,537. So we get the correct number. I'll press Ctrl and Z to remove my filter here. So as you can see here, this is how you can sum between the beginning of a month and the end of a month. It's just like summing between two dates because you're summing basically between the beginning of a particular month. So that's one date, the first of the month, and then you're summing up until the end of the month. So that's your second date, but you get the end of the month using the end of month function. And maybe if you're creating a report, you don't want your dates to look like this. Maybe you want them to look like March 18, April 18, instead of first of March, 2018. So you could actually change the formatting of the dates by highlighting them, pressing control and run on your keyboard. And then if you go to custom here, you could write as MMMYY. So it's going to be March 18, April 18. They're going to look like this. Probably that's a better look than the 1st of March 2018 and so on and so forth. Now, if you need to add another criteria as well. So let's say you want to sum the sales for product two in March 2018. So you're adding product two as another criteria. You're just going to be adding criteria as usual. So equals sum ifs here. And then the sum range here is going to be our sales column. I'm going to absolute that and then criteria range one is going to be our date here and then criteria one is going to be greater than or equal to and we're going to concatenate that onto the beginning of the month and then criteria range two is going to be the date as well because we're going to add our date here as well the end of month so criteria range two is going to be the date column and then criteria two is going to be less than or equal to concatenated onto the end of month and we're going to put our month zero and then we're going to add here our last criteria for the product. So criteria range three is going to be the product column. And then criteria three is going to be our product here. And we're going to close our brackets, press enter, and we're going to drag our formula down here. As you can see here, we've been able to get the values. I'll give this a formatting here as a currency. So let's check our numbers as well. So for March 18 and product two. So let's filter for product two in March 18 here. And we get 6,876, which is the same number we have here. So that's it, guys for summing between dates using the sum ifs function. You could do the same thing with the count ifs function and count the number of rows between two dates and keep on adding criteria as you wish as well. So thanks guys for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you for watching the video. If you like the video, press the like button. Make sure to share it with your friends as well. Subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you'd be notified with each new video. You can download the example workbook through the link below in the description. Make sure as well to check my Excel courses links below in the description as well. Thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.